Welcome back to the Mad Dog Farm. Today we have a box. Don't often do unboxings, but this one's rather exciting. Uh, I've been talking about this for a while. Uh, I've been watching videos on it, and Tina's been earwigging. And then I started talking about it again, and um, I think she bought it for my birthday, but I think she was worried that I was gonna order one anyway, so I'd end up with two. So let's have a look what's in the box. Thank you. Got some oil. Special oil for firearms. Solvent penetrating oil. Dissolves and res dissolves residues of gunpowder. Does that give you a clue? A packet of felt wads. Any the wiser? Pistol cleaning kit, calibre 44 to 45. Any clues on that one? A little tool. You might have twigged on by now. Box of caps, percussion caps. 44 calibre lead balls. Forty-four caliber black powder charges. It might be coming apparent. So what have we got here? Oh la la! As I say, I don't normally do unboxings. I have already unboxed this because I was rather excited. So we're going to slide it out. Oh, <laughs> some literature. It's been quality controlled and bits and pieces. A handbook, instruction manual, in Italian and French. Not a lot good for me. But we can work stuff out. <laughs> I can translate the French. So, what in here we have... For the uninitiated, this is a cap and ball revolver. 44 calibre. Uh, now, I hear you saying, well, that's nearly a 45 cal handgun. How can you have that in France? It's brand new, they're reproductions, but it's a reproduction of an antique firearm, which in France doesn't have any regulations. You can have this shipped to your door, uh, and all you need to do is prove that you're over 18. <laughs> so this is the 1851, uh, hang on, it's, it's a long highfalutin name which I, I keep forgetting. It's the 1851 Navy Reb Nord Confederate. So it's got the brass frame on it. Um, six thingy um, cylinder, walnut handle. Uh, it's all good. That comes down for loading your, you put your balls in and you load it and it's just fun bloody tastic. But it's just, it all sounds nice. The, the action's good. Um, give it half cock and you can spin it round. You shouldn't ever dry fire it, so I've seen on YouTube. I did do it a couple of times when I first got it, but I didn't. Uh, see that about dry firing it. So when you um, you can half cock it, turn it so it's halfway between a, a cylinder, rest your hammer back down and that locks it in place. So you could carry this loaded and the hammer isn't resting on a cap. So you, if you accidentally knocked it, it wouldn't go off in your holster. Also what they do is they call the cowboy load where they only load five cylinders and leave the hammer resting on an empty one. I should be just shooting outside, so I won't worry about all of that. But um, it's quite good, it comes apart. You can just push that down, pull that wedge out. That wedge comes out. Barrel comes off. 
and then the cylinder slides off. So really easy to clean. Uh, yeah. Now this is the Pieta. They obviously do different ones. Pieta. Uh, there's another make called Uberti. Um, the Pietas are just the finish on them isn't quite as good as some of the others, but it's you get what you pay for. But because you can take everything apart, things like the handle. Um, there's some sharp. There's a sharp edge just on here. But I can take the handle off, I can sand all that down, get it all nice and smooth so it's it feels nice. You can take it all apart and uh, tune it up if you that way inclined. I will do the handle because it, it, it does cut into your hand a little bit. But uh, the rest of it, until I start uh, firing it and stuff, um, there's no point ch trying to tune it up or anything. Um, but yeah, it's now snowing outside. <laughs> so I won't be shooting it anytime soon. But yeah, cylinder back on, barrel back on, like so. Put the little wedge back in. Put it like that, it clicks on the other side and that's it, we're back together. Release the hammer. And there we go. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on this camera. If I half cock it. You, uh, you put the charge down in the hole there, put the ball in, pull that round, so you, you line up the rammer with the hole that the ball's just gone in, ram it all the way in, then um, once you've got all six loaded up, you then put cap on each one of these nipples, or they used to call them cones back in the day, uh, and then you're good to go, and you just, Pull the hammer back and fire it one shot at a time. Every time you pull the hammer back, it rotates the cylinder. So this is my very, very first black powder firearm. I'll say it's totally legal in France. I'm not sure about the UK. Um, you'd have to check. But if you can't get hold of them in the UK, they obviously come under firearms. But uh, this one's got the round barrel. Some of them have got like an octagon barrel, but there's so many different salts of different years and stuff like that, that um, there's a lot to choose from. But uh, Tina did quite well picking this one out. I'm really chuffed with it and hope it fires as well as it looks. So I'm not gonna say it's snowing outside at the minute, so I won't be um, doing any shooting videos today or anytime soon. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna get this out on the range I'll do a video where I'm, I'll show you loading it up. I mean, I've, I'm a novice at this. The only way that I know how to do it is because I've been watching other videos on YouTube, but I just thought I would show the, the subscribers to my channel and anyone else who's interested, um, the excitement. Uh, I want to get some steel targets down on the range so that uh, we can shoot with this. Now, in the manual it says, um, the black powder is measured out in grains and the these charges are already predetermined sizes so you can't do any of that uh, i've have got in touch with a company to see if i can buy the black powder loose and i can measure it out myself it says minimum of 12 grains maximum of 15. now there's people on youtube that are putting 20 25 in it uh, it's probably not a good idea because especially with the brass frame it's not as strong as the steel frame the remingtons are even stronger still because uh, it's the barrels fixed in two places whereas this it's only fixed on the bottom uh, so it's all good I am looking forward to getting it outside so that's it for this video a little bit of an unboxing this is uh, my first adventure into black powder guns um, you can buy black powder rifles in France, they're uh, un unrestricted as well. Uh, I don't know for how long, they might change the rules, who knows. But uh, it's a proper gun, basically. And <laughs> what I always find f funny is an air rifle can't go over 20 joules. I'm not sure how much power this puts out. At some point, when I've got proficient at shooting it, I will shoot through the chronograph. Uh, <laughs> The only reason I'm not going to do it now is because I've never shot this and I don't want to shoot the chronograph and damage it. But um, once I'm proficient at shooting and I know if it's 
going high or low, then I'll put it through the chronograph. I'm assuming it's going to be more than 20 joules. Uh, I could be wrong, but at the end of the day, you've got six shots in here, firing lead balls. That is going to do a hell of a lot more damage than a 30 joule air rifle. It's crazy, but it's an antique firearm, so we won't complain about it too much because we've managed to get one. So, yeah, hope you like this video. Please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, we'll catch you next time when we're out on the range, giving it a shoot. Bye for now.